Hi, I'm Michael and this is War Torn Studios. In this video, I'll be showing you the process I use to get 50 Marines painted in 24 hours. This isn't so much a how to paint video as a look at the process and the workflow that I use to achieve massive results. We're gonna dive straight into the action where you first see the video kick in. I've already done the priming and I'm just about to hit it with a Zenithal highlight. All right, sit back, enjoy. I'll try to keep this as short as possible. We've got our models primed in black and I've done a straight down Zenithal highlight of the highest highlight color. You can see as that's drying in that's actually quite muted, uh, that's because of the black background. we will spraying this on really thin, but that's cool. We're going to then layer this up between the highest highlight color and a transparent blue that is transparent marine from War Colors just to add richness to the model, a nice, deep, rich blue. Because it's transparent, the darkest darks won't be lightened as they would by an opaque paint, but they will be tinted. So where they're now black, they'll be very, very, very dark blue. It'll mute down my highest highlights, so I'll keep this super contrasty look that I've got, but it'll mute it down and give me a much smoother kind of transition. I'm then gonna hit it again with the highest highlight. Now, I could go in white, and that would give me more of a contrast from the black. It would give me maximum contrast, but white doesn't spray so good. It's a little bit speckly, it can look a little bit chalky. So I like to stick with the highest highlight and just go back and forth between that and the transparent color. much richer and you can see it still retains the highlights and the shadows that we've put in with the first pass of our highest highlight and here we have the highest highlights re-established back on so our next job after getting these blues down is to reinforce the shadows we're gonna go all around the bottom of the shoulder pauldrons, in between the legs, underneath the jetpack. We're going with a transparent black, and the idea isn't to paint these areas black, it's to lay a thin transparent black glaze over the top. Again, very much the same as you would be doing if you were glazing with a brush. One thing that may not be immediately obvious when we're shadowing back in the pauldrons, if we approach spraying the black on from this angle as well we're going to pick up overspray on this ridge which is essentially going to black line for us and then we're always keeping the model tipped here so that when we look down this ridge stays highlighted and almost edge highlighted for us and yet you can see how this edge here has caught the shadow and become so much more reinforced all right this next step is all about being brave it's all about practicing that airbrush control it's all about practicing your line work and your dot work and then applying that to the model itself what we're gonna do here, we're going to spray in the gun, we're going to spray in all his little holster and his little um, packs, we're gonna hit in underneath here with the blacks, we're gonna spray all the base right up to the feet, and we're gonna spray the base edge all in black. Like that. Thank you. 
I mean, if you look here, I've managed to get nice and neat around those fingers, nice and neat around those hands. No adverse overspray going on anywhere. It can be done, guys. It's just all about practice. All right, so there's around his packs and around his gun holster. As you can see, we managed to get them nice and neat. You can still see all the blue remaining on the bottom here. You see all our lines are nice and tidy. Right, all that's remaining now is the base. And there we have it. Just literally a few seconds more work on this model and it would be at a basic tabletop standard. All right, we're getting to what's probably gonna be the last job of the airbrush on these models and that is the heads. Um, you can see I've masked up this incredibly funky little collar for them all. I'm literally gonna blast in with a dark flesh tone. I'm using a Driscoll Tone Wicked Color, beautiful flesh tone. I'm then going to Zenithal Highlight down with a nice pale flesh, probably a War Colors, flesh one or flesh two. And I'll show you the results as it's done. There we go, basic flesh tone done. So I've got my Driscoll flesh tone laid down. And I've got Walkerless flesh one in the brush. So Zenithal highlights. And that just picks out all those details incredibly well. Right, so I think we've done just about everything we can manage with the airbrush, so we're going to have to crack on with the brushwork. I'm basically trimming all the areas that require gold with a field drab. You can see just plain and simple Vallejo field drab, but any khaki colour will do. Right, there we have it. All the gold portions are covered with the field drab. Also, I've done all the portions that are going to be like the white leather on these uh, 30k terminators as well. It's, it's going to be a nice warm white anyway, so I figured it was a good base color to start with. Using Model A gold, one coat should cover it nicely. Because the field drab's down, it gives us the ability to literally slam over a real quick gold over the top. See, it's got nice shine, picks up the light well. It's everything. It's everything we're needing. So yeah, whilst it takes a lot of time to get the field drag down neatly, it lets us slam these golds on really, really fast. Right, next, I'm going to be dry brushing the bases. Uh, I've picked the same field drab that. I've based all the gold trim with uh, a couple of reasons realistically uh, it will give it the exact sort of same tonal characteristics as the gold so it will help balance the model and because all we've done is quickly airbrushed over these bases in black they've got a bluey tinge to them from obviously from where we airbrushed the actual model because it's a warm tone that I've done over the top it it kills the blue even though it's you know even though it was quite obvious before you dry brushed as soon as you've done the dry brushing it just kills the blue gives the whole thing a nice warm brown tone and balances off against the rest of the model really simple really effective 
everything that's not meant to be blue I've painted in black I've done all the gold trim on it I've touched in with a warm kind of grey colour where the bone work goes and he's ready for detailing and here we have a detailed one I've left quite a lot of black on the model because I like the whole blue black thing I think it's quite effective but we've got metallic on his gun belts we've got a nice dark crimson on the cable in a little bit of silver picking out here and there that crazy rocket launcher on his uh, above his head I've just picked out the missiles with a little bit of warm white and dotted them out with that same crimson touched those bone areas with a lighter warm white for the highlights and painted his eyeballs that's pretty much it guys all that was left to do is paint a little bit of silver on the guns obviously any purity seals maybe a bit of hair a few little tiny details around the model and obviously paint the lenses in on the helmets the captain's helmet's got a little extra special treatment Okay, thanks a lot guys, like it if you liked it, hit that subscribe button and any comments, stick them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you.